This piece began years ago when I watched a wildlife documentary showing the beautiful synchronised courting dance of flamingos. I remember thinking that would make an incredible automaton. So I sketched the idea down before it disappeared. Fast forward to today, while searching for a unique one-off project, I rediscovered that old sketch and the whole concept came rushing back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how the automaton works as I piece it together. And along the way, I'll show you some of the design decisions and how I created a few of the parts. First step was to sketch out an outline of the flamingo using lime wood. I studied its courting dance posture carefully and I wanted to capture the way it holds its head and body in a long, elegant, almost regal stretch. I cut out the basic shape and I use a mix of methods when shaping my models. Belt sanding, carving knives, whatever feels right. I'm constantly pausing, checking the form, comparing it to reference photos and slowly removing more material until I'm happy with the shape. This won't be used in the finished piece, but it's a reference for me to scan as a digital model. So I can use it to design the rest of the automaton in CAD. The flamingo is made from two main parts, the head and the body, and each of those is machined as two halves. Working this way lets me machine the internal cavities first, adding the holes for the mounting tubes and shafts. Then I flip the block over and machine the external shape of the flamingo. I machine the parts in two stages, first a roughing pass to remove most of the material, then a finer finishing pass to bring out the clean contours. Once both halves are complete, I glue them together using the internal locating holes to keep everything perfectly aligned. The section where the legs fit into the flamingo is cut using a separate process. I built a jig that holds the body in a precise position using an impression of the flamingo, allowing the CNC to accurately hollow out the slots for the leg housings. After that, the whole process gets a final sanding to remove any machining marks followed by three or four coats of primer with sanding between each layer. I've been learning how to use an airbrush for about five years now and it's become my go-to method for decorating my pieces. With confidence you can get incredible texture and depth. I start with a base coat, then build up color in controlled layers. One of my favorite finishing touches is splatter painting with a toothbrush and then adding the final details with a small brush. To protect everything, I finish it with a couple of coats of matte varnish. I designed a mechanical unit in a cylinder shape for the flamingo to be mounted on. This allowed the flamingos to rotate back and forth. The unit contains mechanisms to operate the flamingo's head and its leg movement. For this piece to look effective, I needed lots of flamingos, so I decided on 10 which arranged nicely on the mechanical box and kept them as compact as possible to one another. To operate the legs, I'm using a crank assembly made from several brass components. I machined an aluminium jig to keep everything perfectly aligned during soldering. The crank also includes a gear, which I make by machining an aluminium rod down to the correct diameter for all 10 gears, cutting the teeth and then parting off each gear individually on the lathe. Each one is pressed and secured tightly onto the crank. And the final step is machining out the waist between the crank arms to reveal the finished shape. To make sure the main shaft stays completely concentric, I fabricate that part as a single piece. If I were only making one crank, I probably wouldn't go to the trouble of building jigs. But because I'm making 10 identical units, the consistency is absolutely worth it. The legs themselves are made from brass tubing and are fixed into the crank assembly using a retaining compound. Next up is the crown gear, which takes more time and effort to produce. Unlike the previous gear, each crown gear has to be made individually, with several extra machining steps. This gear not only drives the crank, but also controls the flamingo's distinctive head-turning movement using a yoke-style mechanism. A small pin on the back of the crown gear moves the sliding block, and by increasing the length of the slot in that block, I can create an intermittent sliding action. The mechanism is housed inside a unit made from four panels, all screwed together. 
The Flamingo itself is mounted on top of the unit using a brass tube positioned directly beneath the head. The legs attach to the underside of the body and are secured with a metal pin through the side. Underneath the unit are two wooden gears, one fixed to the housing, which changes the direction of the flamingo's walking, and the other fixed to the crown gear shaft, which drives both the head and leg movements. The head shaft is inserted into the brass mounting tube, connected to the slotted arm linked to the sliding block. All 10 units are identical, except for one which has a longer shaft to drive the additional mechanisms. For the box I didn't have any boards wide enough so I glued two together and milled the panel flat on the CNC machine. This automaton has more bearings and gears than anything I've built before. I like to double up on my bearings for extra stability. Building up from the base the first layer holds a train of gears. Three of those gears drive the three rows of flamingos, rotating them side to side so each row follows the next, almost like a wave. Each gear is part of a yoke mechanism with a sliding block and rack. These mount onto the side supports through slots and the supports then hang into the side panels. Let me jump back for a moment to the gearing connected to the crank handle. The brass gearing was actually a last minute addition. Once everything was assembled I realised the mechanism took more effort to turn than I liked. With so many gears running at once the ratio just wasn't comfortable. I discovered that I had enough space to add a slim compound gear and that made a huge difference in how smoothly it operates. But adding that extra gear reversed the direction of rotation and because I prefer my automata to operate clockwise I had to reposition the yoke gears at the base so the flamingos would still lead from the front row. What I didn't realise was that this also meant they now were walking backwards. I didn't notice until I'd finished everything and posted it on social media and a couple of sharp-eyed viewers pointed it out. It was an easy fix but a time-consuming one. I had to take apart every flamingo unit and swap the leg crank around to correct this mistake. Next I added all the gears that link together and drive the flamingo units. These gears sit in every other bearing housing. For the shaft that run through the bearings I use a medium strength retaining compound, strong enough to hold everything securely but still removable if I ever need to take a shaft out. And just to note these gears don't interact with the racks. In the past whenever I needed to connect two gears at a right angle I would use pinned gears. I've recently discovered that cutting a small chamfer on the edge of the gear profile works surprisingly well for this kind of setup. The large gear that connects to the crank assembly uses this chamfered profile and it's been a really effective improvement. Now I'm ready to install the top section of the box which simply screws into place and then fit the crank handle on the side secured with a grub screw. Each flamingo is inserted from the top and the first one to go in is the unit with the longer shaft. That shaft runs down through its bearings to the base where a small gear is fitted to drive the flamingo's walking direction. The bottom gear of each flamingo unit engages with the main gear train and the second gear above it meshes with the rack system. As I install the rest of the units one by one there's a bit of a gentle wiggle involved to make sure each set of gear teeth lines up perfectly with the next. When I operated it for the first time I noticed the flamingos were shaking far more aggressively than they should. It took a while to figure out why, but eventually I realised the bearings weren't tight enough in their housings on the support struts. So I took everything apart and made new supports with tighter bearing fits, and that completely solved the problem. That's it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.